But like if I had a totem pole of things that were of importance, abs would be at the bottom because I know that everything he teaches and everything I teach will eventually result in a manifestation of seeing apps because your body's gonna get leaner and all that sort of stuff. Like if I had to choose between Mike and Mona as a coach right now, I would choose Mona because she's, she's more in mind with what I'm capable of doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so for you parents out there, make sure that you're still kind of eating right and living right and doing the best you possibly can because that does go to the kids. Santa, so 4740 at 272. At 40 years old. That's crazy. And this guy's in the NFL. Pulls. I can't do that. So the, the point there is that <clears throat> we are 100% about uh, the quality of life. So I don't care. And, and I did this with some of my clients right now. And some of the Titan crew members. I said, hey, uh, I want you off of uh, any kind of vitamins or any kind of this. We want to make sure the, uh, the blood tests come back and everything goes healthy for these a couple. I got some beautiful women that are dealing with hormones and stuff now. And so we, we are working with this, but it's the aspect of the, the quality of the body from the inside out. And that will reflect, I don't need you to have abs. I need you to be healthy. Yeah. We'll get you abs. Cause that's the side effect of everything that we do, the way that we eat, the way that we train. Yeah. Abs are an ancillary benefit to the lifestyle that you're being taught, not the focus of what it is that you're trying to do. And I'll be honest with you. I mean, the reason take that have, further, take it further, because well, if that is the only reason, if it is the only reason, then you're not, you're in the wrong place because I know Mike and I know Mike's approach. It's not going to be solely, okay, we're going to work up today and do 200 crunches and we're just going to eat 12 pieces of celery. He's doing this for a reason. And if there's a solid reason behind it, yeah, then great. But if you're here because you have a goal to become a healthier version of yourself today than you were yesterday, abs are a byproduct. It's the like if I had a totem pole of things that were of importance, abs would be at the bottom because I know that everything he teaches and everything I teach will eventually result in a manifestation of seeing abs because your body's going to get leaner and all of that sort of stuff. So we can't neglect stuff. And what I was going to say is I've neglected my body for years in terms of getting getting work done guys look you haven't seen this, this isn't yet. an injury this, this is, is actually self-induced this is self-induced i got body work done today i drove an hour and a half to go see dr nick noriega who did a ton of great work on me we did scraping and my arm brother was frozen i couldn't put my hand behind my back and pull it off my back it was literally frozen within 30 minutes dr nick got me to have range of motion and I can't imagine that if I had done this my entire life leading up until now, how unbelievably awesome I would be. I told my son yesterday, I said, Mitch, if I really, really did like T12 type of stuff, if I had people for every aspect of my life, it's time for your massage. It's time for your food. It's time for your water. Just, you know, like a Tom Brady type of deal. I would be superhuman. I would be a freak. I would be an absolute freak. And that's what I was talking about, Mike, today. I said, when I was talking to Doc, Dr. Nick about you today and his mom, I said, this guy's a specimen of a human being. He is he's not a normal person. But that is part genetics and mainly work. Like m the majority of it, work. From the age of 9, 10 years old, living in a house full of athletes that were, you know, all battling to eat and outwork each other. There's something about that competition and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and we were just talking about this, and this is for you parents out there. So uh, one thing that we started with Titan is we started nutrition from birth. Uh, we went with the goat milk because of the research. We actually, sorry, sorry, that's incorrect. We started two years before that. The incubator that we started with. Um, so I started eating right at nine years old. My first competition was Olympic lifting for a competition in that sense. Martial arts was younger than that, but uh, Olympic lifting was at 12 and 13, and then powerlifting was at 14. Um, but we started getting Mona ready and we started getting Titan just feeding correctly because you can't coach size. The one thing that I hope you parents are doing, and I was just talking to some of my clients that have kids, and I was talking about how um, the way that you eat as a father goes to the kids. And so for you parents out there, make sure that you're still kind of eating right and living right and doing the best you possibly can, because that does go to the kids. Um, and it's cool to see uh, everything that Mo does 
Titan follows around and does. She moves the kettlebells, he moves them. She does the cardio, she, she, he gets on there. And again, that's going to change in time, but it's a great start to it. And this has to go with you kids that are in high school, hanging out with friends. When you start training and not going to the party Friday night, and you get the football <coughs> game Friday night, and then, and then you go watch film with your family or something like that, get up Saturday morning and go in the gym, and the rest of the team starts seeing you go to the gym Saturday morning because it's not about high school football. It's about getting to college. It's not about college football. It's about the next step. It's what you're trying to do. So in every aspect of life, it's not about that moment. You're working towards something else, but try to appreciate the moment. How do you do it? How do you appreciate high school football or college football for these guys, but still be thinking about the future? I saw an interview with Philip Rivers the other day, and he's coaching high school football now, and he's out on the high school football field, and he said, you know, the best time, and he had it broken down. I played 350 games, you know, 250 of them were professional, 70 were college, and, and 65 were high school. He said the best time he ever had in his entire life was high school, high school football, football, period. So... I, I didn't. You got a lot of young guys on your. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me talk to the young guys right now. You might not know who this name is, but look him up. Todd Marinovich. I had Todd on my Zoom call the other day. Now this guy is legendary for having a father who really understood training, like Mike does. So it's it's the Mike Titan relationship to the nth degree. So the story back then was when Todd Marinovich was on the cover of. Sports Illustrated said Robo QB. He had never eaten a hamburger. He'd never had French fries. He's been trained from birth to be the best quarterback on the planet. And part of that is true, but not all of it. Oh, snap. So, Todd, he, uh, I asked him, well, actually, another Super Bowl champion quarterback asked him a question. This is, yeah. Give a pre to this. Okay. So, the father, brilliant guy, smart guy, one of the best for his son. Um, like most fathers, like, like Mark Wahlberg always talks about, he has to sit in the car now when he watches his kids play sports because they kicked him off the field because he, he's sitting there yelling. So it's the hardest thing in the world. He had a great person to coach him and he wanted to coach him and he, and he was very, so much so that it was a world known thing that his father was training him like Mona's training uh, Titan. So with that being set up, yeah. So actually, it was me that asked this question particularly. I said, I don't want to ask you about all the football stories that you've had a million times, but there's, there's something I do want to know. Out of everything that your dad taught you, and I want the young people to listen to me, out of everything that your dad taught you, what do you wish you would have listened to? And without hesitation, he kind of went, <laughs> everything. And here's the deal. And I just told Mike. It's so big to me. It's huge. It's so big there me. will be a stage when Titan will look at Mike and go, dude, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. Maybe not with words, but with his eyes and with his thoughts. And you guys know you've done that as well. But there will come a stage in your life where you will look back and you go, you know what? My dad was right, man. My dad knew what he was talking about. So back to the question of how do I appreciate and enjoy today? You stop. You slow down. You don't act like you know everything because the truth is you don't. And it won't be until you get to be our age that you realize that what I'm saying is true. And when you realize that, it will then be too late and you will have overlooked and not applied all of the lessons that your dad taught you when you were young that were meant to help you get the college scholarship, stay out of trouble, not get in trouble with the coaches, not be that smart ass kid that talks back because you're athletic and you know you can get away with it. There's so many things that I've seen and done that is something that somebody who's been through it can say, ah, no. So when your coach, Mike, tells you, look, man, come on. It just happened with me and my son today, and he's 26. And he's finally getting to the point now where he's really listening to me. And what I'm doing as a dad is I'm like, okay, bro. Okay, fine. Make your own choice. You know? So it's, it's, it's pretty interesting stuff, man, and it's fun. I want to talk to him. Mitch? You there? No, no. Uh, Todd? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating what this young man went through with his dad. And now he is, you know, he's an artist. He's a father himself. And he told me, Clark, I just want to be the best dad that I can be. He gets to talk to a lot of these guys. Like, it's nice having that connection with these people. Oh, it's phenomenal. And then I asked him, I said, hey, Todd, 
you saw my my throws, my my trick shot throws. I said, what did you think? He's like, you're stiff. I'm like, thanks, Dad. He sounded exactly like my dad. You know, you, you do something, he's like, ah, you could have did it better. And it's like, damn, man, how, how, how fast do you want to be? How many touchdowns do I need to score? What do I need to do next? We always want it better. We always want it better. And, and that was something else that happened. I had another champion quarterback. Was that, was that right? Casey and Sean. Yeah. Was that? No, no, that wasn't that. That's oh, pretty okay. good. Okay. Pretty close, Bobo. <laughs> so I had another Super Bowl champion quarterback on that same Zoom call, Brad Johnson, who won a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His son is now starting at LSU, and he got the starting position. Listen to this. Listen to this. He got the starting position, one, because he's a badass, two, because the guy who was slated to be the starter broke his arm fishing. Now, when your dad tells you don't skateboard, don't do this, and you're really wanting to be that quarterback, or you really want to be that athlete, and you're out doing other stupid stuff, again, we appreciate the fact that you're a, an adrenaline guy and, and you love doing all of this, but if you have goals and dreams and desires, and dad or mom says, ah, maybe you shouldn't go, you know, in, unless he caught the biggest fish in the world or he slipped on the dock somehow oddly, he was doing something else stupid that caused him the starting position. Now, Max is going to come in there and ball out and have that job oh, from a sophomore, that, but... never get it back. That's the goal. But here's what Brad asked Hawk. He said, as a father of an athlete, how would you recommend that I, you know, deal with my son? He said, love him no matter what. And you got to understand, we had 88 guys on this call. Darren was on there, I think. And uh, 88 guys on this call all sitting back watching two people that we put in such high esteem, like these guys that have reached the highest level in athletics. We're watching this conversation play out. One who was coached by a dad that was overbearing, and the other one who didn't want to be a dad who was overbearing, giving each other information that, if applied, can be beneficial. But any information that you get, if not applied, is completely useless. Uh, one question for you. Yep. Was, because you said it there, my curiosity is this, because he came back around later and said, I wish I listened to everything. Yeah. Was his father overbearing or was his father being a father just trying to give him the love? The stories and what I've heard and what I understand. What was it from the cat's uh, meow? From the cat's meow was, was, here was something really super interesting, which the USC guy might appreciate. Marv Marinovich played in the NFL. Marv Marinovich was ahead of his time with training. Because he was so hard on his kid, which Mike's going to be hard on his kid, I was hard on my kid, everyone's hard on the kid because we want the best for them. I believe, from what I heard Todd saying and how I heard Todd referring to Marv, he always called him Marv. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts. But here's what happened during my Zoom call, and I pointed this out to Todd, and he got this look on his face. When he transitioned from Marv the coach and overbearing father to Marv the guy that had so much wisdom that he wished he would apply to his life, he started, he was calling his dad Marv at the beginning of the conversation and then he said, Dad. What was the change in the personality? When he started talking about, man, I wished I would have listened to my dad more. And I almost cried, and it almost brings tears to my eyes now because you see this transition from a kid who was hurt by his father because it's like, Dad, I'm trying my best. You know, I'm trying my, I remember looking at my dad going, man, I just, I did my best. I tripped when I was racing that kid. I didn't, you know what I mean? But, and then he realized his dad was only doing what he knew how to do. His dad was equipped to train him the way he was training and think he was doing his best. And Todd now is at a place in his life where he can understand that better, and he realizes, that's just my dad. And then he also realized that when Troy Palomalu was on the stage in Canton, Ohio, getting inducted in the Hall of Fame, he said, one of the biggest things in my life was Marv Marinovich. Whatever that guy taught me, I did. That's why I could dive over the line of scrimmage and sack a quarterback, because he made me be the athlete. Regardless of how old we get, uh, we still got those chips on the shoulder. Yep. Use them for the best of your ability. Don't get rid of them. I'm not one of those guys that says get rid of it. Use that past. Um, I, I've always used my my uh, uh, being put into special ed in classes as a benefit, it and, be. and it's such a benefit. And I wouldn't be close to where I am today if I wasn't ever taken out of regular classes and put into special ed. Look, you talk about women who are overachievers. There's one in this house like 10 feet from us right now. So you have access to both of those things here. And my Instagram is at Clark Bartram. Someone just asked.
you have access to both of them here. Like Mona, I saw the other day, she's doing the 30-day blitz. It posted up on there. You want a woman? You want someone that's going to coach you and, and bring, go go get with Mona? Like if I had to choose between Mike and Mona as a coach right now, I would choose Mona, Mona. because she's, <laughs> she's more in line with what I'm capable of doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, tomorrow's not promised. Live it today. Uh, give somebody a call today. Just check in on somebody, a friend or somebody, and just say, hey, just thinking about you. Um, Tomorrow's never. I. It's one thing that he and I do is is uh, early morning texts to each other, um, three four o'clock in the morning. Hey, get up, let's go, yeah. get that moving. Um, so just kind of give a shout out to somebody to say hi to him. Uh, it's a crazy weekend for a lot of people, and a lot of people out there probably don't know that their friend lost somebody on 9/11. And then the world is just crazy right now. The world is absolutely upside down. Um, yeah, so, let me say this regarding what he just said. I go through my phone, like I'll be sitting there and I'll just go through, scroll through my phone and I'll see a name and it'll connect with my heart. Now this might be out there for some of you, but I really don't care because it's truth for me. And when I feel it and I say, call him or text her or do whatever, I do exactly what I'm feeling. And I say, you know what? For whatever reason, I felt like I needed to reach out to you. I just want to tell you, I love you and I appreciate you. If you need anyone to talk to, I'm here. And the truth is, more times than not, that person will get back to me and say, you know what, your timing couldn't be more perfect. And I'm grateful that you took the time to call me because how many times have you said, man, I should call so-and-so and you don't. And like Mike said, tomorrow's not promised. So how bad do we feel when we don't act on those impulses that are put there for a reason? And I, you know, speaking of women, I think women have that more than anyone else. So women, you're not, like separate from this and you can overlook those promptings in your heart but we should all act on those because especially you guys guys Cause, guys cause the hard. guys yeah. the guys all try to act like macho and all that stuff and like yeah no, no you don't do that reach out to your boys we're just talking about two guys that got to the pinnacle of the world in their their fields um and it comes down to when you get to our age you'll understand that it really is just everybody's the same. Everybody's hurt about something. Everybody's dealing with some pains. Everybody's trying to move through things. Everybody's got ups and downs um, with their relationships. Um, you know, so reach out to somebody today. Say hi. There you go. Give a little love to somebody, all right? Be vulnerable. Don't be, be vulnerable. Oh, look at that. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, we got to get back to this game because he, the Seahawks kick some ass. Sorry, Colts. Um, and the Browns are about to and beat the, the Browns Chiefs. are beating Kansas City, and I got some more of my one-on-ones that I need to talk to and make sure that they are on the plan and uh, set to start the week. With that being said, bye bye, Lucy. I'm calling you right now. So aloha.